we're going to look at how to slice up the Amoeba Amigos website. And we're going to do it in sections. So right now, I'm going to concentrate on the masthead here, the banner. Now, if we look at this in Photoshop um, and we click through, we can see there's sort of three things that we need as images, three things that we can't actually create in CSS. So the first thing is these horizontal lines here, these sort of white lines on the pink. We'll have to save those as an image. Then the stripes, the gray stripes in the background will also be an image. And then the curved bottom of the Amoeba Amigos logo, sort of like the ribbon tips, will be an image. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to go and I'm going to save the lines and the stripes and the ribbon bottom out as images. So I'm just going to save for web on these and um, we should be good. So let's call that lines. And then I'm going to do the stripes here. Stripes. Now, the, if we're thinking about what types of image to save these as, you'll notice in the last one I just did it quickly, but they're both set as PNG 8. And the reason being is that we always want to keep our file size down. So with PNG 8, um, I have selected just two colors, the light gray and the dark gray. And you can see our file size is a nice, good, small size, which is always our goal. The last one then is going to be the ribbon bottom. Ribbon. All right, so we have the three images that we need. So let's go into our HTML and set up our HTML and see how this is actually going to work. So what I want to do first is I'm going to make my index.html file. And let's start with the title because we know that that's the most important thing. Amoeba Amigos. Okay. And let's put our appropriate meta tags in here. So the handheld friendly, the mobile optimized, and the viewport. So there's our three meta tags. And just as a reminder, these three tags are there to tell the device in the browser that we are going to support their device no matter what its settings are. So we've optimized it to be friendly for handheld devices. We're supporting a minimum resolution of 240. And we're supporting whatever device with their device is. We want it to start at a scale of one and we're supporting any resolution for this screen. So the next thing here, let's go ahead and put my CSS file in. So I'm going to call that general.css. OK. All right, so we're pretty much ready to go. Let's start looking at the HTML we need to actually produce the masthead or the banner. So first of all, since it's sort of the header for the website, I think a header would be appropriate element. And I'm going to have a class here. Let's call it banner. All right. So within there, since this is kind of like the home page of the website, if we look back at our image here, I would say that the Amoeba Amigos, the name of the website, is probably the most important piece of content on the page. So that deserves to be in an H1. So let me give this a class here of logo wrapper. All right, so this is my H1. Now inside my H1, I'm gonna do a link because this is sort of like the logo of the website and it's sort of a convention to be able to click on the logo to go back to the home page. So that's what I'm going to do here. All right, so I have my logo in there. 
So it's the H1 because it's really important and a link because I want to be able to link back to the home page. And the next thing then is let's create a navigation in here. So I'm going to use the nav element. Let's call it nav secondary. Now you may be wondering why I'm calling it nav secondary for my class. And that's because if I look at the design, you can see this navigation only has two buttons, but at the bottom of the page, the real navigation is down here. So in my mind, I feel like this is the primary navigation. And the one at the top here is just the secondary navigation to get you down to the primary one. So that's what I'm going to go with. So inside here, we definitely want our UL and our LI elements. Um, so the first one is help me. All right. And the second one was um, just nav. OK. And so we want this one to jump further down. So we're going to link it to the idea of nav. So when we have that created, we can actually link down to it. So this is sort of the HTML, I think, that we need for the banner. Let's just go to our browser here and see what we can see. All right, so that doesn't look too bad. So let's look at how we're going to style this now. So I need to make my CSS file. Um, I'm going to start with targeting my HTML element here, and I'm just going to do the standard get rid of margins and paddings. And I'm also going to set the font and the background color. So the background color, we're going to get that from Photoshop. So let me go back to Photoshop here. And so that is this gray here. It's going to be BBB. All right. And the font, that should also be in Photoshop already for us. You can see right here I'm using Georgia. So I think I'll set that as my default font size. Georgia is probably a good choice for my default font size or my default font family. So let's go back here and we'll go normal because we don't want it bold by default. We want to use the 100% of the default font size. We want a nice loose line height for the web. And then our font is going to be Georgia with a backup of any serif font the computer has. All right, and then I'm going to target body here. And let's just put a margin of 0 and a padding of 0 on it for now and see where that gets us. Awesome. So it looks sort of like that. Now I'm just going to open up my thingy here so that I can make my screen narrower. Because we are sort of targeting the 240 range, I'd like to get this around a 240. Um, 240. There we go. So that's the size that we're kind of targeting right now. So we'll use that as our baseline. Okay, so next is to sort of set up the, the um, banner. So I'm going to target the banner here. And I'm just going to put a border on it so you can see where it is on the page. So let's go 1px solid. Let's go with blue. So the banner then has this blue border on it. That's the whole banner. If we look back here, that's the whole he header element. That's the blue thing. All right. So the next thing then is let's target our logo wrapper. Let's put a border on it. Let's go with green on this one. So there the green, that's the logo wrapper. And then let's target the logo and we'll put a border on it. Let's go with red. So I'm just doing this so I can sort of see where these things are on the page and see how they're sort of working. Now, if you look here, you can see there's some weirdness with the red border. It sort of stops and then it continues down here. If we look back here, that's because the logo is actually an A element. So A elements are inline level elements by default. So we're going to want to set this one to display block so we can actually do the things we want to it. So there we go. So that's looking more what I was expecting to see. Okay, so if we look back at Photoshop now, Photoshop, you can see there's these the gray stripes all behind the banner. Then we have these white stripes here on the pink. And then the gray right here represents the logo itself. So what I'm thinking, let's start with the gray stripes here. We could put those as a background on the banner itself. 
So let's target the banner. I'll say background transparent and give it a URL. So dot dot slash img slash um, stripes is the one we want. And we definitely want that to repeat. And let's just start it in the left top because when it's repeating, it really doesn't matter where we start. Okay, so that looks like that. I think that's pretty good. Now, if we start looking at the logo and the logo wrapper itself, you can see here that there's a margin of, between the blue line and the green line, there's some space. So I expect that, that it's because there's a margin by default on the H1. You can see right there that's represented by the orange. So let's target our logo wrapper and let's set the margin to zero. Let's do padding to zero while we're at it just for fun. Okay, so that gives us a little bit more of what we're looking for. Now, if we look back at our Photoshop document, you can see the text here is centered. So let's do that next. I'm going to want to center the text. So text align center. Oh. All right, centered text. Okay, so let's start thinking about how we want to set this up. How are we going to get the, this effect where these white lines are behind this sort of the ribbon and the pink is down here too so let's actually let's start I'm gonna grab the pink and I'm going to set that as the background of the navigation so we can see where the navigation is so that had the class of nav secondary so let's set its background color all right so there we go so there's our navigation okay now you'll notice Inside the navigation, you can see the navigation isn't touching the other elements. There's some space underneath it and some space above it. And that is because if we look down in here, if we hover over the UL, you can see the UL has margins on the top and bottom. So let's just target that. Go nav secondary UL, and we'll get rid of its margins and padding also. And we might as well get rid of its, its bullets at the same time. Okay, there we go. So that looks a little bit better. So this here is the navigation, and then we need to get the stripes on here somehow, and we need to get that sort of the ribbon on here also. So what I suggest we do is this is a little trick that I that works in this situation. There's of course many different solutions to this problem, but what I'm gonna do is if I target the logo and give it a width, let's say of 6M, and then I give it margin zero auto, I can center it on the screen. So go like that. 6M is maybe a little too wide. Let's make it 5M. So I want it to be just wide enough to accommodate the text, but not too wide so that it looks unusual. So that looks pretty good. So now you can see here, the red border represents the A element, and the green border represents the H1 element. So the green is the logo wrapper, and the red is the logo. So the trick I'm gonna do here is, what if we were to put the pink and white lines on the logo wrapper, on the logo wrapper, and the gray ribbon part on the logo itself? So on logo wrapper here, let's go background, transparent, let's put the, the the lines on here, so that's IMG um, lines. So we want those only to repeat in the X direction. So we'll put repeat X, and we want their position to be starting on the left and at the bottom of this element. So we have this here. So the lines are now at the bottom of the H1s. The H1 is the green border, remember? So the lines are at the bottom, and you can see, look, the red bordered item is actually over top of the lines already. And if we look in Photoshop, you can see that's sort of the effect we're going for. So the gray right here in Photoshop would re be represented by the red border, and you can see it's covering over top of the lines, which is exactly what we're looking for. So let me grab this gray here, and we'll put that as a background color onto our logo and see if that gives us the effect we want. So background color. All right, let's go back to Chrome. And there we go, so that's the effect we're looking for. You can see the gray 
is covering over the pink and white lines. The only thing that's missing is, of course, that background image. So let's go back in here and let's put the background image onto this element. And so that was called ribbon. So we don't want that to repeat, so we'll put no repeat. And we want it to be at the left and the bottom. Okay, so that gives us something like that. But you can see it's a little bit too wide for the available space. And the reason I made it too wide in Photoshop is because if the font size increases, I want to have some flexibility in the size of the ribbons. So what we can do then is in our CSS, we can target background size and set the size of this. So the background size is like background position. It always goes horizontal first and then vertical. So in the horizontal direction, we want it to fill up the whole space, to be scaled and stretched to fill the element. And then the vertical, we can just set auto, which means it will use its default size in pixels, whatever that happens to be. So there we go. So that's exactly the effect we're, the effect we're looking for. All we need to do now is just do some finessing on the logo and put some colors in there and get rid of those borders. We don't need those anymore. So I'm just going to go through here and get rid of these borders so we can see it without the borders. All right. So let's go and put some padding on here. So the logo needs some padding. So padding on the top, say 1M. Padding on the left and right, we probably don't need any. And let's do 1M on the bottom. Uh, that looks okay. How does that compare to Photoshop though? So Photoshop actually has more on the bottom than it does on the top by the looks of it. So let's go back here. Let's change this to 0 0.5. How's that look? And maybe even a little bit more on the bottom would be good. 1.2. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so let's go and since if we remember the logo element here, the logo class is a link, in here we want to be super specific. So we're going to go logo link and logo visited. And this will really allow us to change the colors and stuff like that. So I want to go color, set that to white, get rid of the text decoration. Spelled that wrong. Decoration. Ah. Okay. Cool. And what else does the logo have? So it's, it's all caps. That's important. And also it's not Georgia. Okay. So let's go here and we'll do a text transform uppercase. All right. So it's uppercase now. That's good. But you can see it's not quite wide enough anymore. I don't think it looks quite as good. So let's just change the width here. Let's go to 6M. See if that looks better. That looks good. Now you may be wondering um, why I haven't, why I didn't write it in uppercase in here. And if you think about digital platforms, when you use uppercase, that means that you're yelling at the person. So we don't want to be yelling at our users the title of this page. So it, really the uppercasing is just sort of a, a style thing, which is why we do uppercasing with our CSS instead. Okay, how does that look? That looks pretty good. Um, so the one thing you may notice is that in Photoshop, this is a different font here than the one I have in here. So this is Georgia right now, but this is uh, sans serif font. And I'm going to check and see what that font is. It's PT Sans Narrow, and you can see it's bold. And that's actually a Google font. So I'm going to go to Google Web Fonts, and I'm going to include that font in my website right now. So I'm just going to search for it here, PT Sans and it was narrow so let's click on that one all right quick use and we only want the bold style i actually went through the psd and checked and i only ever use pt sans in bold so i'm only going to check bold and so here's my css right here i'm going to copy that let's go back to sublime and i'm going to paste it on my page here okay so this will allow us to now use that Font. Now, one thing you'll notice is right here, there's this type attribute, and that's actually optional in HTML5, so I like to keep my, my code clean, so I'm just going to get rid of that. 
And since I'm a little bit obsessive compulsive, you can see Google's using single quotes, but I'm using double, double quotes everywhere else. So I'm gonna change those because, you know, I'm not happy with those double quotes. There we go. So I'm not, I changed it to double quotes now just because I'm obsessive about things like that. Okay, so that looks good. Now we'll go back to our CSS here and we can use that font family. So let's go font, bold. Um, what size do we want it to be? Let's say 2M. We only want one, one line height. So we want to a very shallow line height. And we go PT sans narrow. I think that's how Google spelled it for us. Let's just go back to the browser and double check. So PT sans narrow, yep. So you may see in here, oh, there's an example right there. That's exactly how they specified it. And that's what we want to do. And then we'll go sans serif. Okay, let's check our browser again. Ooh, there we go. That is significantly larger than what we had originally set out to have, right? Like the font looks massive. So maybe it's our font size. Let's change our font size here to 1.8. See where that gets us. Still not quite small enough, eh? Let's go 1.5. Ah, that looks pretty good, but now our padding is way too big or our width is way too big. So let's change our width here. Let's go with 4M. Oh, that's pretty good. It's not quite wide enough. I'd like it to be a little bit wider, 4.2. Cool, that looks pretty good. How does that compare to our Photoshop document? Uh, pretty good. I think the padding on the top is, is not quite the same and the padding on the bottom is not quite the same, but it's really close. And you know, you could just go in here and adjust these until they're just exactly the way we want. All right, so that's pretty close for the logo. So if we go back to Photoshop now, let's look at the next part of our banner, which is these two buttons right here. And you can see that they're both pretty much the same. They have the same borders, the same rounded corners, they have the same text and everything like that. They're even the same width. So by looking at them, I see right away that since they're the same, that tells me that I should be using the same CSS for them. And if we look a little bit further down here, you can see there's another button right here, which is almost identical. It's got the same border, the same rounded corners, the same colors. So I think that this and this are actually almost completely the same. So I'm gonna use the same class for them. I'm gonna share a class between those things. So I'm gonna go down into these links here. I'll give them a class of BTN so that it's exactly the same for both of those. All right, so let's go style the BTNs, dot BTN. And again, those are links, so I wanna be specific here and target my link and visited states at the same time. Okay, so let's first get our color here. So our color for the border is this one here. And then we should already have our background color somewhere in here. So we'll go and find that in a second. So how thick is that? Let's go 3px. Now we can probably get that thickness from inside Photoshop. If we select on these, we go here, we go to the stroke effect, and you can see there it is, it's actually 2px, so we, we chose well. All right, and the border radius on that, I think we're gonna have to guess on, on those, so let's just guess here, border radius of, let's say 6px, to see if that does what we want. Uh, not quite big enough, eh? Let's go 8px. All right, let's put display inline block on these. Now again, link elements are inline elements by default, but in this situation, I wanna be able to put padding and stuff on them, so that's why I'm choosing display inline block. All right. So let's put padding on these. So on the top and bottom, we need very little. The left and the right, we probably wanna do 0.7m, oh, I forgot my m there. Okay, that looks pretty good. We wanna change our 
color. So is the color actually white in here? No, it's sort of a light pink color. So let's get that pink color. Okay, and then they are, they don't have any text decoration, so we'll set that to none. Okay, and we also want to set their background color to be the pink. Now, in the navigation, it doesn't make much sense to also do that, but since we're sharing this with the button further down the page, we should set their background color to be pink. So that looks pretty good. And then they also share the PT Sans font. So let's put that in here, font um, bold 1M, let's go 1.2M and one line height, go PT Sans, Ugh, I can spell that narrow and sans serif, okay. All right, cool. They're even a, a little bit small, we could make our font a little bit bigger. Let's go 1.4. That looks pretty good. Okay, cool. Now, if we go back here, let's change this to normal. I want to see, I think I'm... Ah, uh, so it's it was making it even thicker, which is probably because we're telling it to be bold even though we're using only the bold font. So let's maybe make this 700. Hmm. Oh well, let's just go with that. We want that to be bold or change it to 700. We'll use 700 because it matches the name of the font online. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, what we want to do is we want to get them beside each other. So in our Photoshop document, you can see the nav is on the right hand side and the help me is on the left hand side. So that to me means that we probably want to float these. So float one left and float one right is probably what we want to do to make it look the way we want. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to float one left. Now if we look in here, you can see we don't really have any selectors for them. So I'm going to target, give a class to each of them. Let's say, let's say this one is nav help and this one is um, nav btn let's go with that so i want to target nav help and float it to the left and i want to target nav btn and float it to the right there we go let's go look at that okay so that looks pretty good they're in the positions that we want but you'll notice now that the pink behind them disappeared so this this is a common issue when we float things Looking in here, you can see that this element, the li element here, and the li element here, so all of the I elements inside of this ul and inside of this nav have been floated. When all of the child elements have been floated, the parent will collapse down to nothing since the float removes those elements from the flow or changes how they act in the flow. So a simple hack to fix this, to force that parent element to surround its floated children is we could just type overflow hidden on here. So you can see I put it on the nav secondary, so I'm putting it on the parent element. And now you can see our, our um, pink comes back. Okay, let's go back to Photoshop. And you can see there's some padding around the sides here, and the padding is equal to this down here. Not exactly sure what that how much that is, but let's go with 10px. So I probably want to target the nav secondary and let's put padding on it of 10px. See where that gets us. That looks pretty good actually. It's what we're looking for. Okay, and the last thing then, these are uppercase in Photoshop, I just noticed. So let's go text transform uppercase. Now you may be wondering why I put the uppercase on nav secondary and not on the BTN. And that is because I noticed in the Photoshop document that the buttons up here are uppercase, but this button down here isn't uppercase. So I put the uppercasing on the navigation so that it doesn't affect that other button further down the page. All right, and the last thing is to give them the right widths. 
So let's go down here. We maybe don't need padding on the left and the right if we're going to put width on them. Or maybe we do. Let's reduce the padding to 0.4. Let's go min width of 5m. I'm just sort of guessing numbers here. So 5m is clearly way too long. So let's go 3m. 3m is close, but not quite long enough. So let's go 3.2. Mm, could even be a little bit wider. Let's go 3.5. Ah, I like that. All right, and then we want to center the text. So I, again, I'm, I think I'm going to put that on here because that other button did have centered text also. Center. Cool. So that looks pretty good. The last thing I think we want to do, the last couple things we want to do anyways, are in here, you can see the nav has this, this downward facing triangle on it. And it would probably be nice since these are buttons if they had some sort of hover state on them. So let's start with the hover state. I haven't designed a hover state in Photoshop here, but it would be good to put one on. So let's target.btn. We want to target hover.btn focus and dot btn active all right and how we want to style them let's say they change their background color to white all right and let's change their color to the border color the darker pink that's nine seven zero zero six three okay how's that look Ooh, I like that. So there we go. We've got our hover states on there. And then the last thing we want to do for the navigation is put in the triangle here. So the triangle, let's save that out as a graphic. Oh, and you can see I have two hover states on here. I have normal and then I also have a hover state. So we could probably use those two graphics to design this. So let's save this one for the web, PNG24. Yep. So let's call this arrow off because it's the default state. And then let's show the hover one. And let's save this as arrow on for when it's being hovered on. Okay, let's go back here. Oops, wrong, wrong button. So what we probably want to do is we probably want to only apply this to the nav BTN. So in here, we probably want to target dot nav BTN dot BTN. So the button inside of navbtn, um, and then we pro we want to do our our colon link and our colon visited stuff here. So let's give it a background image. Well, let's just do background. Um, so the background color is that pink color, which is bd zero two seven d. And then we want to put this image in here, slash images, slash, what did I call it? Um, arrow off, yes. No repeat. And we want it on the right-hand side and in the center, like that. So let's see where that gets us. There we go, that's perfect. We just need to fix up the hover state now. And we already have a graphic for the hover state. So I'm just going to copy this so I don't have to type everything so much. And I'm going to put colon hover here this one to focus. Oh, I noticed that I was missing a comma up here. Don't want to miss those commas. And active. So what changed here? The background color becomes white and this becomes the on image. All right. There we go. Look at that. So we now have a complete navigation and I think it looks pretty good. And it should scale too if we make our browser wider. You can see it scales out nicely. If we get below 240, then it doesn't fit, but that's okay because we're only hitting the 240 level, so it fits pretty well like that. And that's our navigation.